Hello, my name is Miguel Arnaiz and this is the INTEF course on Digitally Competent Educational Organizations. I'm here to talk about assessment and how digital media, media influences it. First of all, it is necessary that we focus on three main levels. Student learning assessment, student learning accreditation, and the assessment of institutional teaching programs and processes. When we talk about the impact of technology on learning assessment practices, we have to point out that this impact has various dimensions. First of all, it affects the subject of assessment. What do we assess? Do we assess answers, the ability to ask oneself questions, final products, argumentation, processes? What is important? Assessment processes should focus on competences. Thus, formative assessment practices, which give students feedback on their learning process, extend their scope and variety and include more aspects. This doesn't mean that summative assessment is going to disappear, not at all. They have to change it so as to include multi-modal final products which exhibit not only declarative knowledge but also problem-solving skills. It should also include cross and transdisciplinary knowledge. Furthermore, apart from the teacher, expert, other actors can participate in a simple way in the assessment. We can promote peer assessment and external assessment done by somebody else different from the teacher and the other students. The educational organization should support and promote these kind of changes. If we wanted to put into practice a test in which students could apply all the elements we mentioned, or if we wanted to take into consideration the external assessment or student participation in peer assessment, it would require organizational changes and also changes in the mentality of the institution that go far beyond the isolated proposal related to new types of assessment. We should try to help organize information flows that will enable teachers to set up different mechanisms in order to give their students more and better feedback. In this way, the learning assessment will really be useful and it will be helpful to the students learn better. Assessment also plays a role in the accreditation process on which technology has had a great impact. Technologies increasingly enable people to carry out learning processes in a systematic way and to be part of teaching processes that have nothing to do with the formal institution to which they belong. In short, the educational organization should count on procedures of recognizing these types of learning that take place outside the institution, but clearly improve the teaching and learning processes that take place inside the institution. As an example of how these are recognized, we can mention the digital badges issued by Educalab Insignias and the open badge backpack issued by the Spanish Ministry of Education, Culture and Sport. We must not forget the importance of data in education. This is called learning analytics. Learning analytics are not just bare numbers. They are constructs based on data which was collected using specific tools. This doesn't mean they are not biased just because they are data. They are not biased because they were collected using specific tools that only collect certain type of information. The collected data went through a specific type of statistic treatment and afterwards was given to the teachers. The data the teachers receive is already processed data. They received it in the form of a control panel. Only if the organization and its members are capable of analyzing the data in a critical manner will they be able to use it adequately to improve the teaching and learning processes. There are many questions many question marks surrounding the, the use of data from our students and their learning analytics that still need to be clarified. Nevertheless, we have a large number of information at our disposal and we should use it in a more useful way. The information we get from the learning analytics can be particularly useful for the assessment of teaching and learning processes. From all the data that we have, we could draw many conclusions on what works and what doesn't work in our educational design. We have a lot of information about classroom behavior, about the educational materials we use, the work students do at home, the materials we create, etc. We shouldn't use so much of this information to feed the student performance and learning assessments, but rather to improve 
future editions of our courses and subjects. With reference to the use of learning analytics in the assessment process, the institution needs to consider three important issues. First, what type of information do the data extraction tools obtain from the members of the institution? Is regulating the use of this information both inside and outside the institution possible? To what extent? Secondly, the organization should consider if the tools it uses provide useful information that can be used to improve its own processes. We should start to critically analyze the data and the type of analytics we receive from all these tools because they are not just numbers. They are the result of a specific type of tool which processed them in a specific way and then translated the numbers into data. The final data supposedly describes our lessons or certain subjects. We should be able to make institutional decisions with regards to these analytics. We should consider what each of these analytics mean and decide which ones we, we don't want. We also should be able to reject specific tool or analytics because we believe the information it provides is not relevant or the method used for processing the information is not correct. And third, we should develop a code of practice or some kind of internal regulation in order to promote a meaningful use of the data we have for the improvement of future teaching and learning processes within the organization. We should use the available data to draw conclusions that would enable us to improve the learning processes and establish the things that work, the things that don't work, the dynamics we would like to keep, and the ones that we obviously need to be changed, changed in order to enhance the student's learning experience. Finally, the data could provide the students with information about their performance and could allow them to make decisions related to their learning process or in reference to the metacognitive strategies they put into practice at every stage of learning. Important and urgent challenges. Now is the time to raise all the relevant issues and to try to answer them as an organization.